So you're looking for information about the Phuket Sandbox. So let me tell you in this video. So I have this video broken down into three parts. The first part is how to get into Thailand through the Phuket Sandbox system. Second is what you're going to expect when you arrive there, what additional things you'll be doing, some things you already have planned, some things you might not already know about, and I'll try to tell you some of the things that I observed and also that I went through. And last thing is my conclusion and some predictions and the things that I've seen over the one month period while I was there in Thailand. So now let's talk about the first chapter. First chapter is about how to get in. So getting into Thailand is a little bit of a unique situation now. So unique by you need to do a few steps to enter and you probably will be like, what, what is this? What, are you, what, are we, what do I have to do? So starting off, you need to communicate with the Thai embassy or consulate when you are planning to go there. What is required for you to do is to provide yourself or provide them with a flight plan, your, uh, your medical insurance that covers up to $100,000, and also, and lastly, your hotel booking that is of minimum of seven days now. That's if you're staying for a seven day period. Now they're allowing, as of October 1st, vaccinated travelers to arrive into the country or into the kingdom and do a seven day quarantine period and then afterwards go off and do stuff. But as of recent news, also they're changing it as of November 1st to have fully vaccinated travelers to go quarantine free. So let's revert back. Now you might have said, okay, what do I need? What do I need? When you bring your hotel the booking and everything, they're going to provide you with what's called a Shaba certificate. I'll put one here on the screen up on the left and you'll probably get an idea of what it looks like. This is a certificate that pretty much tells you your date, your there's a unique code, all that kind of things. And also at the same time, you need to provide a prepaid booking of the PCR test that you will do on arrival. Most likely you'll find the best ones based on your location and that's pretty much when the hotel will provide you an easy window to do your PCR test. They'll tell you this is the nearest one to us. For example, if you're staying in Patong, the nearest one would be John Silong Mall in that area. If you're staying up north towards Mai Kau, there's a one near the Mai Kau. Uh, I, have, I have a few pictures, I can show you what I mean. It's near, it's near on the road in front of Shell, as an example. So going back to the second now part, once you've provided all that information of the, once you've provided all that information to the consulate, you'll be reverted back to getting your first pre-approval on your certificate of entry. So once you get that done, then they'll ask you to upload further more details like the Shaba certificate that you got from the hotel, like the medical insurance that it covers up to 100,000 in case if something happens, you can fork the bill over to the medical insurance versus you paying out of pocket too much. Next, the other parts are that you're going to be looking at once you provided them one, two, three, four, then it's like uploading your passport, uploading a few things, uploading a few documents, and then good to go. You wait for your travel date. Now, that's pretty much now chapter one. All right, so now in the second chapter of this video, I'm going to explain how and what are the additional things that you might face. So one of the first things that you're going to see is your second and maybe first PCR test when you arrive there into the country. So when you arrive to Thailand, you're going to be first met with your first PCR test in the airport. And then your second one will usually be on your sixth and seventh day or will be pushed back to the fifth and sixth day. And if you are a non-vaccinated or a one-time vaccinated person, you will be doing an additional three more days of your quarantine and you'll have a further period on your PCR test, which will be on the eighth, ninth or 10th day. So most likely they just want to find out your results are negative so that you can go freely. This is people that are now in October. So when we're moving into November and further down the road into December, all the way into 2022, the rules will change and adapt as it goes on. So additionally, what you'll find out is that a lot of stores are not open. Um, a lot of things are not there. When I was around there around September to October period, uh, a lot of the stores, a lot of malls were not open. And I can show a few clips. I just made it to Patong and this place is literally dead. Like we don't, I don't know what happened here. I, look, look, look at all the stores. Let me get out of the shop. All the stores here, they're all closed. 
everything is pretty much just kaput. Only a few stores are running. And these few stores that are running, they're just running like restaurant stuff and juice. Nothing else. It's really, like really freaky. Nothing, no life, no nothing in this place. And people are desperate. It's so sad to see what COVID has done to a touristic place. And I know this is just one spot and there's so many others. Like I'm looking even for food just to, like, to eat and there's nothing as well. I don't know. It feels weird. Like even here, for example. Like the famous tiger, you know, tiger nightclub. Empty. Not even, not even designed or shifted to be food. All stores are shut down and closed, pretty much. There's not much to do here so far. Like in, there's even a like shawarma place shut down, closed. It's really, really sad. Really sad. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyway, even John C. Long is closed. Even like Central Phuket is closed here. The kebab shop. Everything. Everything is closed. Only tours and. And a few things are open. So it's gonna go back to the ho to the hotel. It seems there's not much to do right now. It's really it's really kind of sad. Anyway, trying to go find some food. We'll go from there. This is what I was talking about. A lot of places were closed at a certain time. It felt like it was a curfew. Uh, this is just my opinion. I mean, these things can change over time, but. A lot of stuff that I noticed was that the hotels and resorts were trying to build an activity log. Uh, from what I noticed where I was staying in the Anantara and Maikau, they provided a lot of adult and children or adult and kids activities for people to do in a constant basis. So this was a very unique situation that I found myself in. They were always providing more things to do. They were already recommending things to do around the area. And they were already providing a great environment to be and to live around. Watch out for my review for that. My travel itinerary was I landed in Phuket. I went to Koh Samui after the quarantine was completed after 14 days. And then after a few days from there, I changed my plan, went to Koh Phangan, and then afterwards returned back to Koh Samui. And I can tell you there's a big difference between the Phuket Sandbox and the Kosomui Plus or the Kosomui uh, Sandbox program. You have to understand also is that the size of the population on the different islands. Kosomui was more of a more tourism, more people coming for business. So there was not really a lot of locals and the people that I did speak to were all in a like they, they had to cut down costs, they had to cut down staff. It's kind of a sad situation, but that's what the outcome of what COVID-19 has done. But back to Phuket, on the other hand, there was more of a little bit of a hustle and bustle there. There were some local markets. There were, some, the, 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 there were a lot more discounts. Everywhere that I went, there was a lot more discounts, but local markets or the little street vendors, it's fixed price. Nobody wants to deal with anything. Everybody wants one thing. Give me your money, that's it. So be very cautious about that. People will not try to haggle. They just want your 100, 200, whatever it is. They tell you the price, they'll give you that, and that's it. So the old days of haggling and baggling and all these things, they're, they're pretty much, they're gonna come back, but maybe later. That's my observation there and the things that you will probably see yourself. So that's pretty much now end of chapter two. Now we're gonna go into chapter three. All right, so let me conclude on this video and give you my final thoughts. So from what I've noticed there, when I, from, from what I noticed during my stay of about a month, I found out that I wanted to go up north to Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai. I was not able to because of the hot zones that were being of COVID-19. And I had to be very cautious when I was going around the country so my plan was to only stay in Phuket, to go to Koh Samui, and then pretty much return back to Phuket. This pretty much allowed me to go into the, the sandbox loop, is what I call it, to stay in a sandbox and go into another sandbox and stay there and 
observe the two programs. And pretty much I can tell you from the facts of what I've noticed, the two programs are way different than each other because of the nature of the governments and mayors and things like that that are there. The two places are completely different. Kosamui is an isolated island off the, off the different coast of Thailand and Phuket is on a different side of the island but still connected to Thailand through the Saracen Bridge. So there is still a little bit more life versus on the other side of Kosamui where their life, getting things to the island is through boat or by air. So it's a little bit different and a lot of people have left that island. It was pretty much a decimated island. So it felt like the tsunami came over there and just wiped it over. Only a few stores were open, major retailers were open, and major, major, major hotels were open. Like the big ones are only open. The Maria, the Anantara, the Amaris, those were open. Moving on. Entertainment was a little bit of a lack. There was not a lot of things to do. Uh, a lot of the federal or uh, government parks were closed off. Only a few things were open. I have a few videos about the waterfalls, like Kathu Waterfall and uh, Bang Pai? Bang Pai? I think it's Bang Pai. <laughs> Bang Pai Waterfall. <laughs> I'm not sure of the name. I need to check my videos, my logs. And only a few things were open during that time and, and it allowed me to observe what was going on. They only allowed certain things and certain stuff to happen. It was a little bit of a controlled environment. I f did feel safe the whole time. I didn't feel like I was sick or going to be in threat by people or by the environment. Thank God to that. But also, I came back with a different refreshed view of what the new tourism is going to look like. This is pretty much going to be something that's going to be handed to us that we have to take the steps to enter any country most of the time. Most of the things that we're going to be noticing is PCR test on arrival, PCR test on departure. If you're going to go back to your country, you need to know the rules of your country or the country that you're going to visit. Possibly quarantine if you're sick on arrival. These are things that I've noticed also. So if your temperature is one degree high, like a 37.5, they might pretty much say, pull you out of the line and say, nope, you're gonna go into a quarantine for a few days because your temperature is spiking. Who knows? These are things that I've probably gonna, these are things that are probably gonna happen. Another thing is programs have changed. What do I mean by programs? A lot of activities, programs, uh, events, entertainment of some sort has become a different uh, motion now. Why do I say this is because I went on two different distinct uh, programs. One was a elephant sanctuary and the other one was a Fifi Island. Fifi Island, everything has changed, but I got a unique perspective that I was there during probably the first ever visits. And I can tell you, I've never seen it that way. I could see the coral, I could see the fish, I could see no more speedboats around. Sadly, you did not, I was not able to see Maya Bay. But another aspect was that the buffet or the, 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 the lunch, dinner, the lunch uh, buffet doesn't exist anymore. They will be pretty much handing you lunch boxes and those lunch boxes are cold. So there was no way to reheat them. It's a little bit sad that I, you get cold food after a long trip, especially if it was raining like it was for me. And I can tell you one thing is that it's a little bit of a disadvantage, but I do hope that they are learning and they will adapt quickly to make the changes happen because I can tell you, I've never seen it that way. It was a sight on its own and it was unique. I'll show my upcoming vlogs, my videos and all that, my reviews of hotels all in the, on this channel. I mean, subscribe. Hopefully this information that has helped you. And if you have any information or any comments that you want to know more about, comment down below. And I hope that this video has given you the much information of what's going on. So my name is Ibrahim and I hope this travel video has informed you enough about what to do next when you're going into Thailand. See you later.